It's Tuesday, March 19th, 2024. Let's talk about the news. From the Associated Press, Netanyahu snaps back against growing U.S. criticism after being accused of losing his way on Gaza. Following a speech by U.S. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer last week, in which he said Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu had, quote, lost his way, end quote, following Hamas's sneak attack against Israel on October 7th, 2023, and in which he called for an election so the people of Israel could potentially put someone else in control of the country and its retaliation against Hamas in Gaza, Netanyahu said that Schumer's comments were inappropriate and offensive and that Israel will not hold an election at the behest of a foreign government. This was an interesting exchange, as it is assumed that Schumer was serving as a stand-in for the Biden administration, saying things that the U.S. government itself cannot say, and doing so via the highest-ranking Jewish official in the United States. This statement was given in a context in which Israel does seem to be losing a lot of support, their external monetary and military backing still largely in place, but its allies at times going around it to try to help Gazan citizens who are reportedly suffering from war crimes perpetrated by Israeli troops and who are reportedly starving en masse as a result of the Israeli government keeping sufficient aid from flowing into the region. From Reuters, Niger revokes military accord with U.S., Junta spokesperson says. The military junta that's governing Niger has announced that it is revoking the military accord it had with the United States, effective immediately, and that U.S. military personnel and civilians working on the two bases it has in Niger must leave the country. The U.S. had a little more than a thousand troops in Niger as of 2023, and they were primarily there to help local governments deal with Islamic State and Al-Qaeda-affiliated militants in the region. The military junta took control of Niger following a successful coup against the democratically elected government in July of last year, and since then it has been tightening ties with the military rulers of neighboring countries to the dismay of neighboring democratic governments. And from Deutsche Welle, Argentina's Senate rejects Malay's mega-decree of reforms. A so-called mega-decree proposed by Argentine President Malay has been rejected by the country's Senate, calling into question his ability to overhaul the government, as he had planned. The vote was 42 to 25 against the bundle of more than 300 regulations, and while it still has a chance to survive a vote in the lower house, Malay's party has a minority of seats, in both chambers of Congress. Some analysts think his shock approach of scrapping the country's existing economic policies, replacing them with more laissez-faire versions of the same, could help Argentina emerge from its long pattern of inflation and default. Others question the legitimacy of his theories, and more immediately, everyday people living in Argentina have suffered sky-high inflation and intense levels of poverty, both of which have been amplified by his actions so far. If you're finding some value in One Sentence News, consider leaving a quick review wherever you get your podcasts and or sharing the show with a friend. You can find out more about this show or subscribe to the email version at onesentencenews.com. And you can support this and other related projects like the Let's Know Things and Brain Lenses podcasts at understandery.com.